Hey. Hey everybody, we're back. Gonna do some hand lettering. We have uh, Morgan here. Good we, afternoon. We have Roland to sleep in the pouch. We have me, Arlie. Hi, how's it going? We have a baby sleeping upstairs and we have a toddler watching Netflix out in the other room. So, at any moment, <laughs> that could all change. So, <laughs> so thank you for your patience. Um, we have really been having a really awesome time doing this with you guys. Um, it's been a really great way to um, feel productive and feel connected to everyone and feel like... Um, We're getting our kids to take a nap at the same time every day. <laughs> Or at least attempting to. I, I did think about that. I was like, wow, every day at 2 o'clock, Frankie's taking a nap. This is pretty great. And rolling, too. Uh, as you can tell, we're not really big schedule uh, people. So this has been good. <laughs> um, a few updates um, for you. Um, we are desperately trying to get all these past days, so three past days, up uploaded to Instagram TV. We keep having issues where, it, like, we'll get 90% there and quit. So, um, well, we don't quit. We never quit. The computer quits. I just wanted, to, sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> We're trying everything. Uh, We've called in the big guns, uh, which is our friend, artist mom here, um, on Instagram. So we're trying everything. I promise they're going to get up there. Um, so don't give up. We're not giving up. They'll show up. We'll get them on there. Um, so hold tight. Um, what else? Uh, oh. Someone asked us how we started our company, um, and there's a little video in our profile, um, and you can check that out. That's a good thing. Um, that's better than us telling you. I guess, a, a, a long story short, our wedding invitations went viral on the internet, thanks to a blog called Oh So Beautiful Paper, and we started doing wedding invitations. Stop. Just watch the video. That's what I was saying. And now we're here. Um... <laughs> Um, another another thing, uh, I know we mentioned um, yesterday our um, hand lettering booklet, our how-to, basically our lettering class in a book. Um, you can buy this as part of our uh, pen kit, um, lettering kit that we have available on our website, but we also have a download of just the booklet available on our website under our download section. If you just want the booklet um, portion that you can use at home and print out. Um, that is available. We also have, have a couple of free downloads for you guys. Um, if you haven't already printed out the, le the line guide uh, that we have available on our website, that's helpful for this class. Um, but if you don't have the line guide, don't sweat it. Yeah. Um, all you need is a paper and a pen. Um, we also have another free download for you guys. Uh, and we posted about this yesterday. Uh, in our stories and on our everywhere, camera. yeah, it's kind of a cute little thing, and we didn't really realize how uh, relevant it would be until now. But um, this says we will always figure it out. I know it's backwards. Um, we're used to that as letterpress printers, but uh, not everybody here I know is a letterpress printer. Uh, that was a little thing I made for Morgan when we had a really rough year last year, 2019. Uh, little did we know. <laughs> what we had in front of us. Training grounds for this year. Exactly. So uh, I made that as a puzzle for her. I thought it was kind of cute, but um, we're offering that print for free as a free download if you guys want to make that your um, phone wallpaper or if you want to make it. Uh, Text it to everyone you know who yeah, needs it. Or just like, print it out and hang it on your wall. Yeah, it's just for whatever you need. We know that a lot of people are having a really hard time right now. Uh, we feel you. We understand. We know what that's like. And... Um, the best that we can do is just kind of support each other and never give up and just encourage each other to figure things out. You can um, um, download it from our website um, Valerie, in the download yeah. section. Yep. And um, it's free if you want to download it. You, it does seem like, oh, I'm going to have to pay for this or shipping. It's just a, it, you have to go through like the checkout process to get the link. That's how it works. So it's on the website. You can screenshot it from stories if you'd rather do that. Um, so it's just there. Use it. Um, we're also making a letterpress print of it. Um, we're waiting for the film and the plate to show up so we can print that maybe the next week or two. Who got? We don't know when it's going to happen. <laughs> but you can pre-order the print. It's going to be um, for sale, too, if you yeah. want to support us that way. Um, oh. So it's free if you want to pay, and you can. We'd love that too. Um, but. Oh my gosh, Colleen's here. Hi, Colleen. 
and Olaf and Kesha. Kesha, thank oh you. I gosh. put lipstick on today. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's nice to started? yeah, it's nice to not talk because then I can see all the people who are here, and read what they're saying. Olaf, we miss miss you, and we love you, and your dinner looked delicious. I saw that in your story. Um, okay, <laughs> hi Colleen, <laughs> we love you too. All right, Morgan's going to uh, position this phone. We're gonna point it to the computer, and we are gonna get started on the letter D today. D for disaster. D for do we ever get to go back to work? D for these uh, these uh, viruses are killing me over here. Sorry, right. I'll stop. Okay. Okay. Today I don't have the bar cart in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's an improvement. Oh, yes. Um. So what I have here is oh, our. I do have the bar cart. Hold on. Do you want to put it up on another book? We're basically, can I show them how we have this? Can I show them this sure. picture? This is just this is just to show you guys. Hi, this okay. is how, this is our little setup here. This were um Casper brought me these fake flowers he found in the house somewhere. Yeah. Then we have these fake flowers and we're just basically propping this phone up against this fake plant. Um Maybe we should use this lamp we have that we got at the flea Oh market. yeah, look at that. Our kid's name is Casper. He likes to be called Geo now, but when we when he was still going by Casper I found that and I wanted to hang that up, but anyway, now we have to find a geo lamp. All right, there you go. Okay, let's see. Very high tech over here. I suppose we could go to the shop and get our tripod there. Well, there's also things like Zoom and whatnot, but oh yeah, this I, is where we are. This is what we that. what we can manage. So welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. So my um. Do so you want to start off by explaining your setup here because that people ask that question every day. Yes. So what I'm doing is I am using, can you show them to me? Yes. Bring, bring me them. Bring them to me. I have an iPad that I'm using with a Apple Pencil and I have the new operating system downloaded on my computer called Catalina and with Catalina you can just go up to here and select this little button, um, like your display. You're choosing a different display, and it's called Sidecar. So you can basically just like connect to an iPad Pro if you have one. So if you would like to use your Photoshop on your iPad, um, that's what I am doing. I'm basically using my iPad as like, oh no, as you can see, yes. Uh, oh geez. Um, it's alright. They give you idea. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. you can also use a uh, pen and paper. Like, you, you don't need any of this stuff to hand letter. Exactly. And that's the beautiful thing about hand lettering is that it is it is such a, an easy and accessible thing for everyone. I mean, as long as you have a paper and a pen or a pencil. Um, it's a very low-cost way to entertain yourself, um, which I always like. And, um, and with these tools that I'll be able to give you guys and continue to give you guys, hopefully it'll be a little bit of a, you know, uh, kickstart into um, more hand lettering um, and learning more hand lettering skills for yourself. So, um, so yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get up to the, the letter D. We are going to start with our sans serif mono weight because I think that's how we've been kind of doing it. Um, do those lights show up? No, they don't. Okay. So I'm going to start up here. Um, I have my other layers saved from yesterday. These were the C's. As you can tell, we got a little bit crazy at some point. Morgan went to go like check on the babies, and I started drawing feet on my C's and little monsters and stuff. So just as long as Morgan stays here, I'll stay on track. <laughs> she sort of keeps me in line, if you know what I mean. All right. So we are going to start with uh, mono weight, D. And again, we have our baseline here, our X height here our cap line here, our ace underline here, and our baseline here. If you have any questions about what those mean, uh, you can feel free to refer back to some of our old classes when we finally get them on the freaking internet. Uh, or you can also download our handy dandy booklet from the internet at ladyfingersletterpress.com. So without any further ado, let's do, let's do these Ds. So what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna start with our stem. I'm gonna fill, make it basically just like a little rectangle. Can little you wonky. make it any bigger? Yes, I can. Sorry, that's sure. even better. Thank you. No problem. 
Um, so we're going to start with our D as like a, a little rectangle here. What you're doing is you're basically drawing the thickness of your stroke, right? Instead of drawing, instead of relying on the thickness of your uh, pen to be dictating the thickness of your stroke, you're actually just going to say, I want my stroke to be this big and you're drawing it as a shape. Uh, remember, hand lettering is the art of drawing letters, uh, whereas calligraphy is the art of handwriting. So if you really, you know, get it drilled into your head that we're going to be drawing a lot today, you will be doing much better. So uh, let's fill in that little stem there. Um, and then we're going to start up here at the top and come all the way to the bottom and then go all the way to the end there with our D shape. And what we're going to try to do here is we're going to start on the inside and we're going to try to replicate the thickness of this initial stroke here on the stem. And as you can see, this is a little wonky. It's a little funky looking. Um, it's not perfect, um, but hand lettering this uh, gives you a little bit of leniency there. Um, if you want to go back and just kind of beef up some areas, you really want to make sure that um, your stroke is a consistent, uh, consistent weight. That is basically the, the idea and the definition of what. Hello, Morgan is making herself comfortable. Uh, that is basically the definition of what a mono weight um, letter form is. Mono weight, which basically means you know one, one weight as in this um, stroke is the same distance as this stroke, is the same distance as this, and the same distance as that. Um, there are, well, mono weights are a little tricky. They're probably one of the more trickier things to, to do because you can say to yourself, oh, I really like this D. I'm gonna uh, do the rest of my word in this, uh, in this style. And then you start with a, you know, an O, and then you start going like this, and you're like, oh no, my O is so much more bold and thick than my D. And then you go back and you make your D a little bit thicker, you know, <laughs> and then you, uh, you, then you, then you go on ahead and you want to make a letter N, and then your N is like really, really thick and chunky, and then you're like, okay, I gotta make everything else really thick and chunky, but I made that too thick and chunky. So, mono weights. As if you couldn't tell the point I was trying to make. Really kind of tricky, um, especially if you're doing it in a whole word. But I have faith in you, and I know you can do it. Um, the idea with the bowl on the D is uh, you sort of want the bottom to be a little bit heftier here. The top, you have a little bit more liberty in making a little bit slimmer, slender, almost like a, a more, um, uh, uh, a, like a less of a, an angle here, and this one is like a little bit more of a severe angle. Um, the idea behind that is that if you make a D that is perfectly, um, I don't even know if that is perfectly symmetrical, but if this, you know, if, if you kind of sawed it in half and this side was the same size as this side, um, just optically it looks a little funny and it might just look like, um, I don't know, like a semicircle, like a circle cut half in half. Of an o. Yeah, rather than an actual D. You know, the real proportions of a D are a little bit more um, slender in the top and thicker on the bottom. Um, I, I, I wish I could say like me, but I'm kind of on the opposite. I'm kind of like a kind of like an apple uh, with chopsticks sticking out of it, if you know what I mean. Um, but if you know lettering styles, some sometimes you like the emphasis on the bottom half of the letter. Sometimes you like the emphasis on the top part of the letter. Um, I find that when I have D's that look more like, like a, a guy pu puffing his his chin out. Did you hear that? that it's Geo. He's fine. Okay. Um, you know, it's like a big tough guy. Rrr, I'm strong. Yo, he's got some spiky hair. Kind of looks like a carrot. You know, he's got like his puff, his chest puffed out. But I feel like um, sometimes when you have letters like that, yes, these are you. kind of more like uh, Art Nouveau style or like Art Deco style. Um, you know, if you even cu cu couple that with like a little bit more of a stroke on the top, it just kind of looks a little neat. You know, here's like an O. Um, so again, you know, naturally, your letter forms should be something like this, where um, you know thinner on the top and thicker on the bottom. 
but you can do um, thinner versions and um, it has like it does its own other little style and look to it um, and if you have an eraser it even helps to kind of refine those letters just like that um, so so mono weights yes this is this is not a mono weight this is something that has a little bit of contrast here because this is a little bit thicker here and these um, strokes are a little bit thinner there so um, I just want to clarify that that's not a mono weight but I just wanted to illustrate uh, that sort of balance the top and bottom balance and draw tough guy yo how's it going all right, let's do a lowercase d. So our capital D, we went from the baseline to the cap line. Our lowercase d is gonna reach just above on that A center line. So let's scroll down a little bit, and use this line down here. We're gonna do, we're gonna try to make almost like a perfect circle, almost. It's not gonna be perfect, so don't beat yourself up, but don't, you know, don't think you're a failure if you can't make a perfect circle, because the only person I know who can do that is Brittley Bowman, and she's insane. I'm just kidding. Bowman. Bowman. Really? That's how you pronounce her last name? Yeah. All these years, I've been pronouncing her name wrong? Sorry, Britt. <laughs> Britt is one of Morgan's bestest friends. We love her to, to bits, and she could draw a perfect circle because she did it for hours in college. Um, so you want to start with your uh, circle shape. And what you're going to do is you're going to draw your stem and you're going to kind of come in and eclipse it here on the end. And then make sure you have a nice little heel sticking out there and fill that up. And if you want to make that nice and uh, straight at the top, that's great. Uh, just to illustrate what, what it would look like if you didn't eclipse that shape, you would have a sort of like, oh, leaning against a wall kind of situation. Hi, Gio. Oh, let's not rock the cart, honey. So this is good. This is not so good. There may be occasions where you want something like this, but is I'm just showing you the rules so you don't have to break them. Crackle? It was a uh, chocolate nutcracker. Did you eat? I did eat that piece of chocolate. <laughs> you know, your toddler always knows when there has been a piece of chocolate consumed in this house. Who ate this chocolate nutcracker? Because it was not me. The um, leftover holiday chocolate. <laughs> yeah, we were really rationing over here. We're just looking through our Christmas chocolate. Oh, thank you, Gio. We found a, a bin of um, balls in our garage, and he's now giving them to everyone. It's really adorable. And Cause, I have this. Because it's oh, green. Because it's green. And this one is blue. And, blue one. and this one is. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, come here. Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi to Bot's class? Say hi. Hi. Everybody freeze. What's that? Everybody freeze. Yeah. Okay, everybody freeze. Pause your hand lettering. Everybody go all up. Everybody go all up. <laughs> everybody go in the golf ball land. Everybody go in the golf ball land. Okay, Gio, are you ready? <gasps> it's Jordan. Jordan says hi. Hey, okay, Jordan says hi. What are you going to say? Are you going to do a roller coaster? All right. Jordan is one of Gio's teachers. You love Jordan? You miss Jordan? Yeah. I think that was a yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. Here's your golf ball, buddy. Yeah. We're going to keep drawing D's over here, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. You have fun. Bye. Thanks for coming. See you later. All right. You want to watch bot? So, lowercase d's. I think we are good on the mono weight d's, if you guys are good. Um, I would like to begin with... Oh, let's not shake the cart, please. So... Jordan says, my si smile is so big right now. Oh. I miss you so, so much. Oh. Oh. We miss you too, Jordan. You have absolutely no idea how much we miss you. <laughs> I mean, you might, but we really miss you. Um, okay, so we are almost through our sans serif fonts, lettering styles, I should say. It's called sans serif because it is without a serif. And if you can recall from our other classes, a serif is the little uh, feet. Can you zoom in more? Yep. Thank you. 
is the little, the little feet on the end of your letters. Those are serifs. And when your letter does not have little feet, it is called a sans serif. It is without serif, sans. So to continue on our sans serif journey, we're gonna draw a uppercase D that has a little bit of contrast, which is different than our mono weight, which has one thickness throughout all the strokes. Um, so in order to do that, we still wanna start with our stem, probably, you know, the same thickness as the way we did our mono weight one, why not? And then we're gonna draw our outer shape. We're gonna start from behind there and kind of go down below there. Um, you'll notice that I didn't stop when I got here. I kind of continued on and went here. I started here. Um, that's just because you, you wanna avoid this kind of thing from happening sometimes. Um, this is a terrible, I, a terrible D, but you, you see what I'm trying to illustrate here is when you start there, you sort of give unintentionally, can, potentially. Oh, okay. Would you do, um, hold on a second. Would you keep your hands to yourself, please, and not to the cart? But you're tipping me over. Oh, <laughs> don't tip over, Gio. Don't oh, tip no. over. No. Um, hey, Dio, Gio, check this out. You see these little divots here? You see that on the D right here? Look at this. You see those? This is what happens when you start your, your line here. What you want to do is you want to start your line from the end and over there so that your line looks, your shape looks continuous. Can I help? You sure can. Do you want to draw some D's? Yeah. Yeah? Here. Here's a, here's a, I'll get here's a pen. Paper. Oh yeah, great. Here's a pen for you. We have a three-year-old joining us today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see how this goes. Mama's going to get you a pen and some paper. Or would you, would you like a crayon? Um, you want the apple pencil? Mm, I don't know about that one, buddy. Here, I have some special paper for you. Ooh, here's your pen. You can sit next next to Bob. Great. Okay. Yep. You want to bring that little um, red chair? You can sit there. Do you want a chair? Or are you gonna stand? You want to show them what we're doing here? Yeah, we can. We have. I have a special guest here today joining me at our our lettering class. He's going to be live lettering as well. The O? That is an O. Good job. That kind of looks like a D too from here. That looks like a D or like just like that. Nice job, Bambino. Nice. You've got lettering in your blood, kid. Lettering in your blood. All right, bot. Back to you. Yeah. Sorry for the distraction there, or just a little just real life. Just a detour. Um, so yeah, so you really want to make sure that your lettering looks cohesive. You want it to be smooth. You want it to be consistent. Um, you don't want you don't want your your pen marks to be obvious of where you started and ended. You really want it to look like that is as um, complete as possible. So we're going to start drawing this D again. Let's draw our stem, and we're going to start again on this left hand side here. We're going to come all the way across D. Drawing it really slow is hard. Um, and then I'm drawing a little bit larger than I usually do. What I'm gonna do here is I wanna add a little contrast. Oop, that was really um, um, thick. Um, I, so I draw. nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually thicken up my stem here so that this weight and this weight is the same thickness. This is your That's my page. Um, but you'll notice that this, uh, this contrast here in the bowl is uh, what I like to like refer to as like a ribbon. Um, so, what we want to do is really kind of think of it as uh, you know you're twisting this ribbon. Here's the ribbon, and then when you twist it, you get that really thin part in the middle, right? Box. Yes, Gio. So think of this contrast as so you're, you're twisting the, it and it's getting so pinched. Jordan is it, in our class. Jordan is in her class. Yeah, Jordan's taking her class right now. She's learning how to draw with us. Isn't that fun? Um, I already drew a picture for Millie. You already drew a picture for Millie? That's nice. Gio calls us all by his Team Umi Zumi names. So I'm Bot, Morgan is Millie, and you're Gio, right? Um, so this dotted line here represents her axis, you know, since we're doing a, yes, Gio, um, 
Oh, what? you want to? Okay, you know what? Let me just finish going through these yeah, letter D's. Yeah, let Bob finish the letter D's. I want that one. Okay. okay, let's go look. Gio uh, is also obsessed with trains, and uh, he's constantly showing us what, uh, which trains he wants Grandma to pick out for him uh, right. from his little train catalog. Come on okay. here, buddy. Okay, so we have our um, sans serif. That has a little bit of contrast. And um, let's draw another D just to get it out of our system. You know, I think the more you practice, the better. Um, I would encourage you, if you have these lined paper at home, to really just fill up each line with some practices. Uh, the more you practice, the better you'll be. But I also think that, like, drawing a bunch of letters um, just kind of slightly different from each other just to kind of see what it's like is also like really helpful to help you sort of develop your own style and um, you know really feeling like um, you know if you have an idea or a thought or you know just to kind of see like what happens if I do it this way what happens if I do it this way what will that look like um, how will that affect the letter if I if I make this mark here um, and this is just like a super low commitment kind of thing, you know? Nobody's gonna be checking your work. Nobody's gonna be telling you it's right or wrong. Um, but land lettering is just such an intimate uh, experience with your pen and, and your brain and anything you wanna be doing. And it's just like, how can I make it look cooler? What can I do? How does this work? So just experiment, draw a bunch of Ds. Um, that's what we're, I mean, what else are you doing with your time, right? Like. Amazon's turning off non-essential stuff soon, so it's just like, might as well draw some Ds. So let's draw some lowercase Ds. And just like our monoweight D started with this uh, bowl, it's circle shape and an eclipse uh, line there, we're gonna carry that concept over here. And we are going to kind of create a sort of tilted bowl, something like that. Um, just contrast on that left hand side your axis is a little bit my axis right now is a little bit tilted um, yeah, let's go back um, but again we want to create our stem that eclipse that bowl and you want to fill it in and now we have a nice little lowercase d let's draw another one where our axis is a little bit more upright Again, the, the concept is the same. You want it to eclipse it a little bit, and all the way to the top, and all the way to the baseline. Um, the reason that I like to make... Um, oh, thank you, Gio. Frankie's awake. Um, so Morgan's gonna go upstairs real fast and grab the baby. So if you guys could hold your questions, um, she'll be back in a, in a minute or two. Uh, so the reason I like to make a sort of like pinched um, D bowl kind of this this way is I really like the way that this negative space um, looks. I, I like the way that that kind of defines um, the shape of the D. Um, negative space is so important. It is almost as important as the positive space um, because these are the shapes. These are the areas that are telling your brain what you know what this what you know what this shape is oh, look at um, my toes. oh did you circle some more trains yeah wow that's awesome it's it's wow. even more train look, at all the, oh, look at all these trains you know here at lady fingers we have often thought you know if you know if things if things get much worse maybe we'll just open a uh, train youtube channel where geo just builds train sets and uh you know, we get a million viewers of people who just want to watch, you know, toddlers play with trains. It has been done before, believe it or not, which is insane. Um, I'm just kidding. Lady Fingers isn't going anywhere. Um, <laughs> it is tempting to just be like, maybe we should just t make a video of these trains. And, uh, I, I, I don't like what's crazy about these train videos. Um, <laughs> Connie, train video games. Um, Teeny little game. Yeah, buddy. I mean, I know. Teeny little 
karaoke. Okay. Listening games. to what? I think that's going to be very loud for the phone right, that's right next to it. So um, here's your trades. Go mm -hmm. cir circle some more, okay, baby? Thank you. <laughs> All right, back to D's. Uh, negative space, very important. Positive space, very important. Um, you should say little cute baby. I'm a cute baby? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That is that is very sweet of you. You're a cute baby, too. You're a cute baby, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Trash. Trash. <laughs> Trash. Trash. I, I don't understand how your mind works, Gio. But you know what we're going to do? We are going to draw some, sand, um, some serif letters now. Let's do yeah. it. Let's draw some serif letters. We have done sans serif. Okay, Gio, I think your head's in the way, buddy. Be very careful. You see that? Thank you. Um, why don't you come sit over here, bub, and draw with me. Come here. Come here. I have your paper right here, sweetie. Do you want your uh, chair? Do you want your desk? Why don't you sit at your desk? We have a little desk here now for Gio in his office next to mine where he does his very important work. No! Yes! Oh, okay, very unimportant work then, I guess. Okay, on to the serifs. We are going to do some uppercase serif Ds. We are going to start again with our stem. And just like when I was talking about how you want, you know, to start from behind to kind of carry your uh, stroke out to be very fluid and um, uh, organic, we are going to start with our serif from behind, and we're going to pull it out, and we're going to continue back. Uh, my D is really wobbly. This is not a really great D, but I have all this extra space. I'm going to draw a new one. We're going to start with our stem again, nice and strong and sturdy. And we're going to start with our serif from behind. And I don't know why my pen just kind of picked up like that. That was weird. Uh, fill in our contrast of the bowl. Um, I'm looking at it now, and it looks like this stroke is a little bit thicker than this stroke. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to just um, thicken up this stroke a little bit so that these are the same widths. Um, and again, with your serifs, they can be um, the width of your pen nib. You can do a serif that is a uh, slab serif, which is a very sl a very thick, slabby. Hey, what? Yes, Geo. Serif like that. From this small look. Trinkhouse looks like um, it's tied up with a mocha. Oh, really? And then we also have very modern. Here you go. Oh, thank you for this ball. Very modern, sleek, hairline thin serifs. Um, I mean, that looks very similar to this one by my eye, but it's the thinnest I can make my pen. Um, well, it's not the thinnest I can make my pen, but... Hey, boss, can you see uh, yes. boss? Yes, Gia, what's um, up? I want a new catalog. You want a new catalog? Okay, buddy, well, we're going to have to wait until the class is over, okay, huh? Um, Excuse me, boss. Yeah, yes, Gio, uh, is a, the last question, okay, buddy? And then you're going to have to wait until I'm done with my class. What's your question, hon? when we hide behind the curtain when you go potty? Yeah. Yeah, Gio likes to have a privacy curtain in the bathroom with his baby to toilet. It's very, makes a lot of sense, actually. All right, buddy. Why don't you go outside um, and hang out with Mama in the living room? Oh, we'll see Mama. Oh, no. I got to get back to my lettering class. Everybody is, everybody is waiting. 
Everyone's waiting to draw our D's. Out here? Mm-hmm. You can sit there or you can sit. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I'm just going to pull you over here for a second. Um, why don't you go in the living room, sweetie? And Out then. Here. Okay, you got to stay right there. Sorry, everyone. This has been a very um, interesting challenge to try to do live things with a house full of kids. Um, we have three month old twins and a three and a half year old. And uh, I think we're, we're doing the best we can. Um, so without any further ado, let's move on to Hi, our lowercase D's. Hi everybody, Gio says. We're gonna continue with our bowls of Hi. our lowercase D. Hi bathroom guys. Hi bathroom guys. So again, I'm drawing my bowl with Hi, one stroke. Okay, Gio. One stroke. You're using your manners. Thank you, Gio. Thank you for using your manners. One stroke, creating your bowl. Um, and then we are going to start up here at the A center line. We're going to go above that cap line. I help you on the iPad. You can help me um, by sitting over here and playing with your iPad. Okay, come over here and look at the iPad. Look, this is how I'm drawing. You want to see? Okay. So, I'm going to come up here to the... Oh, I am not quite as close as I want to be, so I'm going to redo this. Come up to my A center line. Draw my... Um, Serif, and when I did my and when I did my are you lowercase, teaching me? I am teaching you. Are you are you learning? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thank good. You. Oh, good. Um, when I did the capital B's, hold on. Can one second, I do an yep. O's? Yes, you can do an O. Give me one second. When I did my lowercase D B's, people asked why I like I make my serif like that. Um, it is possible to do a D. And you know, if you want your, I am teaching my class. People are watching this on the internet. You can make your serif go out like that. Um, you can also make your serif go to the right, or you can uh, um, ignore a serif at the bottom. But um, draw a bunch of D's and see which way that you feel more comfortable and that you like doing it best. Are you teaching me? I am teaching you. Why are you, are you teaching the class? You're part of my class. Are you? Yeah, I am. Mean, yeah. I do O next to You want to do an O? Yeah. Can I do Yeah, Gio's going to draw an O for you guys. All right, you ready? Go ahead. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> nice job, Gio. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna wait to do another O, okay, baby cakes? That's a O. <laughs> it's a O. That's a really funny looking O. It looks like a it looks like a little little like glob, and he's going blah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's running. He's like, hey, laugh. <laughs> and this guy's going hi. Oh, he looks mad. Not hi. <laughs> You draw that guy. Yeah. Sorry, we're taking a little, a little sanity break here. He said, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. Plastic. Holy moly. Okay, ready? Hold on, thank you. I get <laughs> More, Millie's gonna come back and she's gonna be like, What have you guys been doing? And we're gonna be like, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> we're we're fine here. We're fine. Um, and now the fun part, you guys, we have now conquered monoweight uppercase D's, monoweight lowercase D's, sans serif D uppercase D's with contrast, sans serif lowercase D's with contrast. Well then we have gone through serif D uppercase D's with uh, transitional serifs and slab serifs and modern serifs and we have gone through lowercase serif D's. And we have also had a very interesting experiment with some funny little guys over here. <laughs> and the next thing we're gonna do is because we are gonna cover Can I go on the channel? serif, sans serif, on the and channel? script alphabet, it is the time channel? for the script alphabet. No, honey, are you gonna sit in your chair, sweetie? No, this chair. You wanna sit in that chair? Okay. 
Can you pull it? No, it's too heavy. All right, hold on a second. I got it. <clears throat> okay, come on over. hour. Okay. Gio is sitting right next to me. We are ready to go. Pull up your pants. There you go. Thank you for putting the pants on. I should mention. I really appreciate that. Um, so to do our up, our uppercase capital D's, you can help me, but you know what would be helpful is if you um, don't touch my pen right now because I'm drawing and I'm trying to illustrate well, for class. Okay? You need a pen? Okay. Where did your pen go? Honey. on that. I know. Hold on one second. Um, I think I hear Mama coming downstairs. She's going to save us all. All right. Uppercase script D. Um, just like we were talking about our axis uh, being a little more upright with our serif and sans serif letters, our script D. Hey, Hi, Millie. Hi. You're back. Thank you. So we, we, we have a little bit of a detour we, here with we, Gio. Oh, we do the... Yeah. Funny little guy. We had, we had a funny oh. guy. It was fun. We had a lot of fun. It was funny. I, I was so glad you were able to participate with the class. Um, is the thing still pointing at the right thing in there? Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah, Gio. We are going to... Okay, we have the whole family in the room right now. We have three children under the age of four. We have Morgan and we have Gio. Oh, and Bot. Everybody's here. I just got a good And you. And me. So, for our script letters, we are going to have an axis that's a little bit tilted. And what that means is that we want that, that center point to be a little bit um, on, a, on a slant. Um, so what that means is when we draw our... Gio, honey, can you let Bot work? You know it doesn't look like it, but Bot draws letters for work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like I draw letters? Well, Bot's working. He's also, I think, tickling my neck or something, which it doesn't feel bad, but it's just a little distracting. Oh, okay, hold on. He was trying to put a, was trying to put a golf ball down my shirt. All right, so I'm going to try that again for you guys. Our stem is going to be slanted. It's going to come down in a loop. Um, things are really devolving quite quickly over here. Gio, please do not put a golf ball down my shirt. I don't like that. Okay. It's a okay. Your shirt is kind of like a tube, you're right. I have a shirt like a tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, Gio, Gio, pull that ribbon, pinch it. Oh, jeez. Okay, Gio, I need you to stop climbing all over me, honey. Okay, here, take your golf ball. Can you come, come sit with me and watch Bot drop? We are going to... when we um, had Casper, Gio, whatever he wants to be called these days, we brought him to the studio with us. We, he grew up working with us, and then when he started learning how to walk and crawl and everything, then we finally put him in uh, preschool, but the babies, the twins, come to, come to work with us. I guess the difference is we, never, we don't really, we don't try teaching a live workshop with everybody at the same time. All right, one more time. A little bit down here. You know what I can't wait Can to I see, Gio? Talk? You know what I can't wait for? I can't wait to see what Colleen and Bridget are doing and what kind of shenanigans they're up to. If they're eating pasta salad again today while they're trying to letter. It can't be any more hilarious than, than, than what is happening right now. Please let go of the pencil. Hun. I need the pencil. I know. We are doing our best over here. Okay, let's maybe take a, a parenting pause. Uh, yeah, that, that needs a timeout. Uh, you need a timeout? What? Uh, I need to draw. Uh, okay. Do you want to do some drawing? Uh, Gio? Okay. You draw for a minute. I'm going to hold Rolly. Okay. And um, then maybe you'll answer some questions here, Arlie. That's a great idea. Here, you draw. Okay. All right, what do we got here? How do we switch the thing? Questions. Okay, I can't stop laughing. Oh, yeah. Me too. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Uh, thank you guys for all your patience. This has been, yeah, really. Um, what lots of parents are doing right now is trying to do the exact same thing, which is work and. Yeah, it is. Um, parent. It's just kind of, yeah, such a crazy time. I feel like there's some people who uh, I've been seeing posts on the internet like, oh, I'm gonna take a nap now. I'm gonna, you know, I need to make a schedule for myself so I, I get productive in the day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't not, not do things. Um, and then when I get like five minutes to myself, I'm like, which thing, should I go to the bathroom? Should I take a shower? Should I put on clean clothes? Uh, Oh yes, on my ah. cocktail. Or <laughs> uh, I am assuming that you are on the ah. West Coast because it's cocktail. I was cocktail hour here an hour ago. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I had I had to put Bailey's in my coffee this morning. It was Morgan looked at me. She's like, "Are you sure you want to do that?" And I was like, oh, "Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that." Um, I need more colors. You need more colors. Well, only black and white in, in Ladyfinger Land, honey. That's what the letter press is for. That's how we put the colors on the on the designs. Um, yeah, so we've been working from home now for the past uh, about two weeks. We closed our, our shop, um, not this past Thursday, but the Thursday before. And we have been home with all three little babies um, ever since. Um, we have had our washing machine um, break. So we've been without laundry for almost two weeks. So the kids are still wearing the same clothes. The kids are still yesterday. wearing the same clothes. Unless we it's dirty, it's not going to change. Whole, there's a policy. Yeah, right now. Uh, unless there's poop on it, it doesn't get changed. Um, we have a hole in our ceiling from where the washing machine leaked. Um, but maybe you want to ask some lettering questions, everyone, while Gio finishes his drawings. My 10-year-old and I are learning here with you. Oh, awesome. We have 10, 9, and 7. Awesome graphic designers. I feel you love it. Oh man, that is awesome. Yeah, start young. I, I, like, I, I was always drawing when I was a kid. I, I, was this, I was this kid, you know? And then you just keep look, drawing and keep drawing and then- Look at the graph. That is awesome. Um, and there's really nothing, nothing better than being able to express yourself using a pen or a pencil or a stylus or, or anything, you know? Um, graphic designers, I think, are uh, artists Where in general. Um, <laughs> why change if it's not dirty? Where That's right. Is the black? Where's the black? Yeah. Uh, just keep drawing with the black, honey. Cool. You know what we'll do? We'll just move this around here. Uh -oh. yeah. Hold on a second. I need to reconfigure the iPad here. Give me one second, sweetie. Ready? Uh, does anybody have any um, lettering questions that I can help with while we're here? Having a parenting break. Yep, having a, what's your favorite physical lettering tool? Ooh, ooh. we're gonna hit okay. Hold on, Gio, hold on, beep, beep, beep. Can we see this for a second? My favorite lettering tool. Um, I really enjoy drawing with a Micron pen, which is over here. Um, these guys, I, I just, I just really enjoy the the fine uh, felt tip nib. You want it bigger? Okay. Bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I like how it's um, it doesn't have any fancy angles or nibs or anything. Um, it it doesn't. Um, it's not. It's not um, refillable, which I know is really great and, and earth friendly. But there's something nice about just being able to pick up a fresh micron and and, and draw with it. Um, it's just like um, the the firmness of it. The 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 feel of it is just something that's so um, uh, familiar to me. Um, and I like the uh, precision of it. Um, someone else is, hey hon, can you grab Frankie for a sec? Okay, um, I don't, I, I sometimes use brush pens. I don't often use brush pens. Brush pens uh, fall into the more of a calligraphy kind of style where you really have to train your hand to understand where to apply pressure and to like let the pressure go. Um, oh, a micron's hard to get in New Zealand. Oh, that's a uh, bummer. Do you have a rapidograph? Uh, if you, box. what's up, buddy? Um, I need it. I'm not, I'm not get down? Bad. Oh, get your, uh, your Apple pencil. It's but rolling I away. Need Okay, go, go run down and grab it. Um, if you have rapidograph pens in New Zealand, those are great. Uh, Copic pens are also good. I think Faber-Castell makes... Uh, what do they have in New Zealand? 
yeah, what, what, oh, I wonder what kind of pens they do have in New Zealand. Um, that is a good question. Um, do we have any New Zealand retailers that buy from us that we could recommend them to? I don't know. We have a, a, we'll a ask, list. We'll ask the pen company who distributes them. Yeah. Sakura of America, Michaela, if you were listening, sounds like um, New Zealand could use some pens from you guys. Um, if your letter is wonky, does it matter if you thicken the right or the left side of the line you are thickening? Also, you're doing all. Oh, thank you, Colleen. Uh, oh, wait, I missed a question. Do you practice or learn new styles anymore, or do you practice by working? Um, hi, Ben. Nice to see you. Um, so let me do Ben's question first, and then Colleen, I will get to you. Um, do you practice or learn new styles anymore, or do you practice by working? I, You know, once in a while, I will find myself sort of feeling like I need a different style and it's kind of hard to explain but like aesthetically I'm like this isn't I'll do I'll do like for example today I was working on the iPad I was trying to draw a, a graphic to uh, advertise this class and um I was trying to write the word every day and I drew it in a couple different styles and I'm like this that just doesn't oh that's look. beautiful it's it just didn't rough. feel like it fit the voice that I was looking for so I just kind of ended up making it a little bit more scribbly I was kind of making it uh, a like kind of a slab serify wonky slab serif. So I feel like I kind of base all of my designs in a like um like in the sort of classic styles and then take them a little I sort of push them a little bit further if that makes any sense. Um, and if I ever feel like I need to get like more decorative or something, I kind of like go within the 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 um. The lettering, the, the letter. So I'll decorate the inside of the letter or add ornament to the outside. Um, but it really has to do with the, the feeling that I'm going for um, in terms of um, practicing. Um, I sort of my practice is my my practice is like my desire to draw the feeling that I feel inside. If that makes any sense, it's not like I'm just gonna practice slab serif. I'm gonna, I like sit down and I'm like, I want to make something that feels a certain way, and I'm gonna keep drawing until I get that feeling right. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to my next question, Colleen. If your letter is wonky, does it matter if you are thick in the right or the left side of the line you are thickening all? Um, it does depend. Um, if let me see if I can. Um, Okay, the the three year old has exited the room. I think we can continue back to what we're doing. But I'm gonna sh I'm gonna demonstrate for Colleen on here. And I think there's a couple of other questions after that. Okay, that I great. Sure I get to. Um, well, you have about seven minutes left. Hang oh on. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let me flip you around. Raise up. Um, how do we do this? I'm using my mouse and a keyboard to control my iPad. I've never done that before. That was so weird. Okay. Okay. Um, where's my pencil? Okay. So. Oh, geez. Let's see. Hold on a second. Had to. There we go. Um, <laughs> like scribbles on here now. Okay. So, for example, um, if we were drawing this D. Ooh. Oh, geez. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, okay, so if you're drawing this D, and I drew it like this. Okay, so I'm looking at this D, and I'm saying to myself, oh, this like doesn't quite come out far or far enough, or or let's say it, this is really kind of like too too far out for me, right? This is too kind of thick. So I'm gonna make my thickness on the inside and also on the inside. So now my negative space looks more like a D. Um, if I were to draw my D like something like this, I'd say, oh man, I really need to add some space onto the outside. But I, I, I don't often, I guess I just answered my own question. This seems really, um, this, this does not seem natural to me. Um, and I guess I never really was able to verbalize that before, but I guess I'll always draw the outside shape first and then add the thickness to the inner spaces, if that makes sense. Of course, if you're doing like a capital T, um, you know, 
I would I would just recommend whatever is like makes it more centered and more balanced. So it doesn't really matter if it's left or right as long as it's you're adding to the the balance of the letter. But if you're doing something like a, a capital D, I would do the inside because I always draw my. Oh, this is really wonky. Um, your outside shape first. Your outside shape has that flow, it has the initial gesture of what you're doing, um, and, to, and to add anything on the outside of it, you're getting into that territory where your addition marks might be more known and it just does, doesn't look as, as um, cohesive. Okay, you've got five minutes to do lowercase d. Okay, did we have any more questions after Colleen? Uh, someone wanted to know, do you, how do you plan your illustration and your type? Like, do you do the type around the illustration? Do you the, do the illustration around the type? That's maybe a Whoa. good question for another day. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to get to that today, but okay. let's try to get the lowercase script D. All done. right, we are starting again with our axis here, our bowl that we are going to draw in one fell swoop, fell swoop, fell, fell swoop, going down to the baseline, but I just kind of went a little bit lower, but that's okay. Make your, your bowl, oops, and then in a uh, start from up here, we're going to start and we're going to go up to the baseline, or the, I'm sorry, the ace underline, and we're going to eclipse that bowl again. Let me draw that one more time. So that is the initial shape. Notice I started here. I started right here. Let me, let me choose a different color here. I started right here and I came up and around and eclipsed the bowl like that. So, uh, and then what I want to do is I want to add the thickness to just kind of hide that sort of behind the scenes work. Another way that I like to draw my lowercase d's in script style is to, um, if I have d, because d's are sometimes at the end of the word, I find that they are find themselves at the end of the word a lot. I just kind of, oop, that was bad. I was talking while I was doing this. Ah, I'm going to do this again. So what I do is you sort of like give yourself a little like tail thing up here. And up here, if you notice, there's like a thickness to this. I just wanted to give the thickness of the stroke And again, eclipse that bowl with the stem. Okay, you've got two minutes left. Um, okay. We definitely will do a Q and A. Um, today's probably not the day for that, as it seems like our <laughs> three-year-old needs um, some more attention than he's getting from us at the moment. So um, we will definitely do a Q and A. Um, there's two minutes remaining. Let's just review a couple things. Um, you can download that free lettering guide in the back. The lines from our website in the download section. Um, it's free. Please enjoy it. We have um, we have free download of our print that um, Arlie designed. Let's see what else. We have a pre-order of the letterpress version of that print. And you can also download the hand lettering guidebook if you want that. We are shipping once or twice a week at this point. We might ship again on Wednesday. So if there's anything that y'all need, um, go ahead and order that. Frankie, what's up? Um, and we appreciate any support you all offer. We are not doing this for the money, we're doing it for the love, but um, if you have a couple bucks and you want to throw them through Venmo, people ask every day, you can Venmo Arley Rose, A-R-L-E-Y, R-O-S-E. We appreciate it, um, and thank you so much for joining us. These will all be online. We're going to figure it out. Coming soon. We will always figure it out. That last D. I'm glad you liked that, Olaf. That was for you. D, 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 D. I love you guys. See you at two tomorrow. Alrighty. Bye.